Of course, team captain, Janelle, will you please step forward? Team captain, will you please step forward? No, I deliberately wanted this look. <laughs> I just say that you, Sean, you really led the team well, and you're a great example of what it means to be a leader of a team. Government officials led by Sports Minister Olivia Grange, sponsors and netball Jamaica executives were among those at the Norman Manley International Airport to welcome home the Sunshine Girls. Each member of the delegation was presented with gifts from new sponsors Ray and Nevue, who will be sponsoring the Sunshine Girls for the next three years. I think it's important that Ray and Nevue continues to show true Jamaican spirit. It's our 60th year of independence and to how our Sunshine Girls have performed over the years. We thought it's fitting the appropriate that for such world-class performers that we have a common board and show support for true Jamaican ambassadors or Sunshine Girls. We want to congratulate them. We heard their cries and of course we responded with a $14 million support as a release to sponsorship. So we are pleased to be on board. The $14 million sponsorship is a significant one, not just for netball. This according to Ray and Nevue marketing manager Pavel Smith. $14 million. 14 parishes of Jamaica, each million to represent a parish of Jamaica. And it's just synonymous with even our limited edition that we launched to represent the 14 parishes of Jamaica, each with a featured landmark. So we're really just adding the support to the Sunshine Girls as part of our list of activities in celebration of our 60th year of independence. Remember, Renevi is the spirit of Jamaica 60th, and we want to continue to show Jamaica what true Jamaican spirit and character means. Medical sponsors to the Commonwealth Games, New Horizon Pharmacy, pledged its continued support to Netball Jamaica. We know that it takes a lot of energy when you go on the field and you did not spear, you left it all on the field every single time you play. And as the official sponsor for the medical kit, any time you want some energy, some vitamin, and whatever else that will make you continue to leave it on the field, we're here to support. It was the Sunshine Girls' best ever performance at the Commonwealth Games after winning the silver medal. It was also the first time Jamaica was beating the top two teams, Australia and New Zealand, at a global event. The fact that the Sunshine Girls are track and field athletes and all the members of the delegation made Jamaica proud is a credit to Jamaica and to say that you all went there and you came back making us feel that you are extra, extra special. And it goes to show that Jamaica at 60, we're doing well. Yes. We're doing very well. It was another great tournament for captain and goal shooter Janelle Fowler. She scored 273 goals from 281 attempts at an average of 97.1%. Amazing sponsors. Um, if it weren't for you guys, um, I reckon that we would not have been where we are today. So thank you very much for your sponsorship. It is greatly appreciated. And to Ray and Nephew for coming on board, thank you so much. We all will enjoy <laughs> your sponsorship. <laughs> we will definitely enjoy the sponsorship. And to Beryllium, as we say, hey Beryllium. <laughs> Thanks for being our lead sponsors. Um, we do appreciate you coming on board, budget and water. Um, yes, thank you very much. And to our medical kit, um, yeah, if it weren't for the medical kit, um, our knees or ankles won't be struck. <laughs> so um, thank you very much um, to all our sponsors and just to Jamaica on the whole. Thank you for always supporting us and for standing, standing behind us and continue to shine at the Sunshine Girls. The next major assignment for the Sunshine Girls is a three test tour of New Zealand, September 17 to 21. It's you in the society that we need to arm ourselves to protect ourselves. Some people legitimately hold that view. That if you can't protect yourself, if the security forces can't protect you, then you should have your gun. And many people have presented defenses in court to say, well, you know, I have this gun to protect myself because, you know, somebody was threatening me and so I had to get an illegal firearm. Now, all of these things require a kind of social consensus that we need to draw the line to say, listen, 
we acknowledge that your economic circumstances and poverty would have predisposed you to guns and gun culture, that your safety and security is also a challenge and that might predispose you. But as of now, no one in Jamaica should have an illegal firearm, as of now. And we have been giving you warnings about this. And if you are caught with an illegal firearm, if you are dealing in illegal firearms, if you are trafficking illegal firearms, if you are using illegal firearms, you will face very harsh punishment. So this is a warning then. When the new legislation is passed, find a way to turn over the gun to the police. We, we might even give you some amnesty. <laughs> because we are going to make it unprofitable for you to have an illegal firearm. Right now, people are caught with illegal firearms. I know of a case, they get one year and whatever in, in jail. Some get suspended sentences. And, they are out again. But what we need to be clear on is that there must be a disincentive and a deterrent for the youngster who goes to school, playing gun war, see his brother with a real gun, decide that he want one as well, go and get one. That, inset, that system must change. And you have to therefore put in place strong measures, including a, a legislative process that changes the risk reward of owning a firearm and the interdiction and enforcement system. Early in the year, we launched the Get Every Legal Gun campaign. And then I said, we're going to target the big fish. And then I tell you, we're changing the law. So I've been giving people warning from the year, and I don't want anybody balling. Because we've been giving warning, and you're, you're seeing it materialize before your eyes. That the people who think that they are importing guns, and we don't know. We are doing it the right way. We are gathering the evidence. We are putting the case together. And we are putting it before the courts. That's what we're doing. You don't, you're not hearing us out there running up our mouths and saying all kind of things. Right? I, my job is, I tell the country, this is what we're doing, and then I stop. And then you see the result. Because we're serious about treating with this gun issue. So all those people who are putting in the guns in the barrels, I tell you, I'm working on that element of it. Very, I'm working very closely with the U.S. authorities. Yes, we are going to get some of those people who are disassembling the guns and putting them into the rice bag, putting them into the soap, and sending it into the barrels. We are going to get you. Yeah. Can't say me never did warn you.